Welcome back. We're having a friendly, ultra extremely competitive match here against uh, one of Kara Comparetto's viewers, Suki Ninja, who just joined Leech Us. Uh, he offered to play a game with me, and while correspondence isn't something I do all the time, I thought this could be fun to do. So, um, yeah, I'm uh, trying to play somewhat competitively here as uh, in real life a tournament is uh, a season rather is starting imminently and I want to play my best so that said when I play my best how am I going to open the game is it going to be king pawn or queen pawn for this upcoming season how am I feeling about this uh, there's a lot of theory that goes with both openings um, I think this season we will perhaps return to playing King Pawn openings. See though if I stick with that, or if I change my mind numerous times throughout the season. Anyway, um, yeah, you could check out my statistics on the website. You can see how many times I've played each opening and things like that. I've actually had an opponent play this very particular thing against me in the past as well. So, um, it's good fun, right? Now, I've actually lost to that in a very super serious tournament game. I was, I think it was the final game of a tournament in a round robin setting or something like that, or maybe the final game of a day. And I didn't understand either how strong my opponent was or what my energy levels were at the time of that game or they were just a really strong player too so there's no shame in losing to stuff like this against the right opponent um so i mentioned wanting to take this seriously so i guess i'll stick by playing opening principle ideas i know in blitz chess i play a lot of tricky moves but I can take this game seriously. Um, so you hear the rule knights before bishops. Uh, but in exceptional things like this, I think we do want to bring the knight out, but the knight is prone to this pawn advance. So I think I want to play this first to take the d5 square from my opponent. Okay. So again, in blitz chess... Uh, it would be a toss-up whether or not I take that. In tournament chess, I don't think I've thought super heavily about this sort of thing. Uh, here I get an exchange and a pawn and an initiative, so that adds up very quickly. That said, I still get the initiative if I don't take it. That's a tough one. Um... But the worst case is that they retreat and I don't get the pawn. And okay, yeah, I get a far greater initiative by taking this than by not taking it. So let's take it. That's the plan. Um, so they recapture. I could chomp the pawn right away. However, it doesn't seem like the best option in this position. Um... If only because they could move this knight out and my queen has to run. I could push this pawn, but all my development is lagging. I think best in this position is to bring out my knight. I can bring out my other knight momentarily, and this could still be an interesting game. Um, so yeah, winning an exchange with a threat to win a pawn, and like this is in a one-hour game... A lot of players would consider this to be a very, very significant advantage already. Um, in the case of playing an online untimed game, it's not entirely clear. Um, computers have won with odds like this before. Um, the other way around, of course. But um, So the proverb or the conventional wisdom to follow here is still knights before bishops unless somehow this rook ends up being incredible i don't think that applies here 
And unless there's some amazing tactic, and there almost is, like, I can almost get the queen up there and do a lot of things. But it's super important to use all the pieces. So we're just going to move the knight out and not play for traps and just try to play my best. Um, but yeah, the thing with untimed games is that, like, unleash us. Untimed doesn't mean, like, infinite time. It does mean more than one day could be spent on a single move. And so that's why I tend to be a bit hesitant about playing completely untimed games. There are time controls where you could have a day or even more than a day to think about a move. I intend to do some work in the future to make that experience even better. Um, So, queen c2 threatens queen h7, right? They do say don't bring the queen out early. Um, but, so my opponent eventually threatens to play pawn d6. Um, if they do play pawn d6, my center, I can't really safely play e5 and support that forever. If I play queen c2, they play pawn d6, I play e5 anyway. We exchange on e5. The knight moves, I play queen h7. Where does the knight move, by the way? Probably back to d7. I'm threatening the bishop, but the bishop can take my knight, and my king's still not safe. So, despite everything trending favoring me, I'm still not sure that pawn e5 is the right move here. On the other hand, if I play pawn e5 right now, the knight does need to immediately move, and it doesn't have a great score to move to. So I think that's what tips this slightly, ever so slightly, by a hair in favor of moving pawn e5 right away. It's because there's not going to be a knight d7, knight somewhere else sort of thing going on here. So... I know this is somewhat exploitative of, um, I don't know, um, it's more like my trap-filled style of chess for me to be playing so aggressively, to have crossed the center rank of the board. We could see I have a pawn on the fifth row already, so this is very aggressive, but in this case, because this knight doesn't have a ton of places to go, some aggression makes sense. This might be more aggression than is required from this position. Um, but already I'm starting to think about lots of things, really. Like queen a4 pins this d-pawn. They'd have to like play c6 or something. Queen c2 hits the knight, but the knight could retreat to f8 and then jump out to e6 and join an attack against my d4-pawn. So just because I've asserted some space doesn't mean my position's better. It just means I have more options than my opponent has. Um, so they're threatening knight g5 in a way. Uh, queen a4 I did mention. So I could play queen a4. This pins the d-pawn. They could play knight c6 or c6 even, breaking the pin. And then my attack doesn't amount to anything in that case. Uh, queen c2 is somewhat interesting. Actually, queen c2, knight g5, knight takes, uh, pawn takes, queen h7 is... Yeah, that's a barn burner of an attack. Yeah, we're going to try queen c2 then. But then they meet this with knight f8, which slows down my attack. And I don't have a next move. No, queen c2 is very trappy. Um, bishop d3 followed by castle and rook e1 would be a less trappy way to play this game. Um, could also play knight h4. If I play knight h4, pawn e6, queen takes h5 continues my attack. 
and allows me to castle queenside, bringing in the remainder of my pieces. But I could do that same thing and throw in bishop d3 first. But if I play bishop d3 first, then I got knight g5, and that slows the... Does it slow the attack? Feels like they're counterattacking if I let all that happen with bishop d3 first. If I bring this out, and if they bring the knight out, I could bring the queen over here, and then play f4. Okay, but now if I do this right away, they could play c5. Yeah, if they play c5 and this pawn's not supported, that's an issue. Um... Wait, oh, yeah, if I play the knight, if they play c5, I've got knight f5. And yeah, this is collapsing. All right, so we're going to play this aggressive move. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a tricky game. Um, so what you see here, sorry, I forgot to update my live stream overlay. Let me fix that for you. So I don't usually use the 81 dojo badge on this. I don't usually conceal the site like up there. But one thing I've been working on is having a widget available. And is that my chess widget? It is. Check that out. So this is what my stream is more supposed to look like than a minute ago. I'm sorry I'm not fully accustomed to this. But, um... Oh, so knight f5 was my idea. They did, in fact, play d6, as I mentioned earlier. Um, I could still throw in queen c2 and castle, despite my attack being rebuffed here. Um, dang. Queen h5 is not bad either. Queen h5 and knight g6 is extremely aggressive, but aggression seems to make some sense. But it's dangerous. Um, well, they're threatening bishop g4 if I do nothing. We're going to play this stupidly aggressive move, despite not seeing the totality of everything that comes after this. What I do see is if pawn takes, like if they take here, I could take here. Um, I could play something like this, and I don't know where my bishop's going to go. But these are some ideas. Um, so that's one way things could go. Maybe there are other ways. They did stop my knight f5 trick, uh, but I've got other tricks. I've got other tricks here. Yeah, just because they started off with some interesting moves doesn't mean that um, they're a bad player. It just means that's a provocative way of playing. And yeah, some opponents will do things like that just to try to ensure that you are not operating from your memory and recalling a game and just playing the recalled moves against them. Um, that said, I in many years have been one of those players who would play lots of super aggressive stuff, or rather would play stuff that like is not in the book. I would try very, very hard not, or to avoid getting positions that anyone would have any clue about, and then would try after getting into the swamp to, uh, out confuse my opponent and win through out confusion. Uh, and yeah, for it, it can work if you are extremely energetic and extremely dedicated to the cause. That's one way you could try to win games. It's a challenging way to try to win games by coming up with unique strategies every single game and not being able to carry you a strategy from one game to the next. It's exhausting, and eventually you will run out of energy trying to do that. But in any individual game situation, it's playable. 
Uh, so knight g6 is my alternate idea here. Knight f5 is still possible. Um, knight f5, bishop takes, queen takes. This knight goes somewhere, and I could hit the knight if it comes out. But they could also hit my queen, but my queen moves and hits the bishop. And they either move the bishop or move the king to protect it. And I still have an amazing attack there. So knight f5 is a possibility, but maybe there's something even better. Uh, I temporarily looked at uh, pawn e6 and pawn d5. Neither of these seems to quite cut it. Pawn f4 is pretty cool. Um, but again, it seems to just slightly miss the mark. Um, so I think best is getting my king to safety. And the only way I see to do that is castling into the fire. Um, so let's do that. So the risk here is that this pawn is not, it's attacked three times, right? I got one, one, sorry, I'm trying to select each of these pieces. They have three attacking it. I have two defending it. And one of the pieces defending it is my queen, right? So, like, this clearly is not a winning situation for me. Um, what I'm banking on is that I'll get a move that I can use to protect that. So that's the idea. <laughs> ah, they burn a move for some reason. I don't know why. I guess this kind of helps the rook get out, um, but yeah, my pawn f4 seems like a very good move here, uh, unless I have something better, and I very well might. Now pawn f4 looks very, very powerful here. Um, hmm. I'm trying to justify to myself doing something more aggressive. Ultimately, I want to put the pawn on f6. Um, or if I play pawn f4, I could play pawn d5 next, and then pawn e6. Yeah, there we go. That's the justification. So this is the plan. In either move order, it seems fine. Um... But for this to be... Oh, I'm sorry. Pushing the Sutter Pawn first. Yeah, they could take this, but I could checkmate them next move. This seems optional, actually. I could have just pushed this directly. Um, if Bishop takes, then I could have pushed this next. And that's a fork. That would have won a piece. And at my level, winning a piece like that for a pawn or two, especially when you already have some material advantage... That's considered decisive. I'm confident that I could win that against uh, most amateur opponents. And I've won some positions like that against titled player, or one titled player before, but um, yeah, I wouldn't bet everything that I could do it again, but I've won in that sort of circumstance. Um, if I push here, the knight retreats and protects my damn knight's sacrifice. Yeah, they stop my pawn f5 idea. Um, it's fine. Um, pawn f5 is interesting. Um, <laughs> Pawn f5 is interesting. I don't... All my other sacrifices are like one turn away from winning. Oh, if I push this, they have a check. That's less than perfect. Um, well, what do we do? How do I do this? Pawn d5 looks very strong. Uh, yeah, no, pawn d5 seems winning. Let's try it. Let's 
so we'll see what they come up with <laughs> we'll see uh let's see what do we got here promise i'm not cheating So, what more can I say that's of some interest to folks? Uh, yes, I mentioned the league um, that's starting up. Yeah, and in league games, I think the time control is one and a half hours per player per game. So, it feels like a lot of time at first, but once you're in there, it's not as much as you would think. It, it keeps ticking away. Um, all right, so this knight is threatening this point, so I evict said knight, so I don't have to worry about it again. And then the question becomes, where's the mate? Um, I mean, there's not one just yet. It'd be so nice to have one, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So this is a problem with doing a premature attack, is that if the premature attack that I've done fails, it's going to take me more moves to checkmate. Um, oh, right. So yeah, I remember my follow-up idea now. Well, no, my follow-up idea relies on that not being check. Unless I'm fully... I mean, I could win that endgame every time, but there's still got to be some better way about this. Um, so how, what's the best way? Nine of three would prevent that from being check. It would also block my development. Um, pawn takes pawn doesn't do anything. It looks cool but it doesn't do anything. Let's see, pawn g4, threatening pawn g5. Is that a winner? Is that a winner? Or have I overplayed? This is my custom. <laughs> uh, it's neither, really. Uh, wait, wait a second. Now, if I play g4, g5, that doesn't quite cut it. Um, wow, do I really have to play knight f3? That's kind of sad. Um, but if I don't do knight f3... Hmm, how do I move forward? Oh, I see the tactic that's been eluding me for a zillion moves here. Um, all right, but if they don't fall into the cheapo, then what? Yeah, it's still not the best use of time to set a cheapo. Oh, I've got another way to protect the square, actually. Um... Yeah, let's try this knight. This protects that square. And doesn't require a cheapo to do so. Yeah, I'm abandoning my king, but I wasn't using that piece anyway. And that piece, I mean the king, of course. So this protects the key square. Um, yeah, obviously there's still some work left to do here. Um, but I can't let this queen, f well, I mean, I could let the queen four cap and I could win the end game every time, but if I'm trying to do some epic knockout, we have to start with this. So that's the plan. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm guessing... Well, we'll wait till their move. 
but I'm guessing one of three pieces is going to move here. Probably one of two. And we'll get into the details in a second. Well, I guess there's a fourth one. There's four pieces I would consider moving in this situation. That's one of them. Yeah, I was thinking either the king or the queen, which are rapidly becoming the center of attention. Either one of those would have moved. But also like this knight, which is kind of trapped, might potentially move um, just to get untrapped. Or potentially they might use the bishop to try to untrap the rest of the pieces. That said, that's not what happened. Um, so... Uh, mm -hmm. Okay... Let me see... <sighs> How do I win this? So close and yet so far. That's the problem with chess, is one move can mess the entire thing up. So it's important to play accurate moves every move. And this is why competition play is exhausting. Um, but never mind. We'll do it. Uh, let's see. So, I've got two ways to attack here. Neither one seems to checkmate. Both seem really close. Um, hmm. Okay. Uh, counting is hard. Yes, I counting is so hard. Um oh hang on. Hang on. I've got an idea. Feels like a terrible idea. Um Yes, yeah, so he who captures first loses ground. This a saying to remember. Okay, so my best move is just to continue a policy of patience. Unless c5 somehow does it. Nah, c5 could never work. No. Okay, that's the patient move. Patient move is correct here. Um, so... Yeah, this is admitting that my opponent, despite having played some extremely weird opening, still is making competent moves. Still is putting up a fight and deserves my attention. So we're going to continue this. Uh, let's see. Or rather, continue this plan of just gradually moving the pieces forward, taking all the space and grinding the opponent's position into dust. And again, just like if you're playing correspondence chess on other websites, it's important to find good moves because any slack move that you make means that the opponent's going to put up many, many uh, turns of resistance. And on other websites, some players take forever to make a turn, like literal days or even weeks. Um, I know on this website, the time control it announces is called unlimited, but it's not really unlimited. There is some finite number of time you can spend on a move. Um, so... Yeah, having played this, this particular move, um, it's going to be kind of fun to reveal what the whole plan is. Also be kind of ridiculous to reveal it. Um, so, 
Yeah, my plan is a king side attack in many different ways. Um, any one of which should be sufficient to do to land the final blow. Uh, our opponent gives us a gift. There are multiple ways I can take this gift. Um, so the cheapo is one. Um, that doesn't seem quite as good as the non cheapo way of taking it. Um, so yeah, I don't want to activate this. I don't want to open this file basically unless I somehow instantly prevail by doing so. And it's very close to instantly prevailing because this open file, my original plan was to like move the rooks to F1 and G1, but if I can just break down this file instead, that could be much faster. Um, if I take that, if they push, I could take that also. Is that faster or slower than knight takes? Um, knight takes, they move the queen to defend this. Um, I think pawn takes is faster. It also guarantees that my king will stay on a blocked file, but no, they could push this, I would take it. They take back, I could, I can't take again. Yeah, I could also take this way, but then the bishop activates. It's no good either. Also, pawn takes pawn. Yeah, I'm considering pawn takes pawn too many different ways here. Um, none of them seem to do anything. It's really confusing. So this check was also a possibility. Um... I was trying to find some way to weave all the checks together and make some awesome thing happen. Um, but I don't see it. It'd be amazing, but I don't think that's possible. Um, so Rook D3 almost weaves everything together, but not quite. Um... Rook F1 is interesting. <sighs> this is confusing. Oh, they've also trapped their knight. Um. Hmm. Such a tricky position. Um, there's another idea. It's pawn takes d6. No, that doesn't cut it. g4 looks inter g4, g5 still looks interesting. Um, g4, they take here, g5 take there i take here this bishop moves somewhere it's not good um yeah the best move i think is rook h f1 which mel merges all the other attacks together um so it brings my final piece into battle <sighs> And admits that this is still a long fight, but that's okay. Um, so, yeah, I don't quite understand. I mean, part of the point of this might be to like bring the knight back into the game. Or it might be with some crazy fun idea of moving the queen away, or it might just be making some scary looking moves around Halloween time. 
like any of those really could be a motivation for this sort of thing. Um, so, I think we'll continue, or we'll play a scary looking move against their scary looking move. I haven't decided which of these gets pushed next. Um, or it might be something different entirely. Like, I don't know. But it is good that almost all of my pieces are attacking. The only one that's not helping out is this bishop back here, but I couldn't find a use for it. But yeah, if lines open up, that seems generally to my favor for things to open up. Alright, so I've been delaying taking this pawn, understanding that if I take, their bishop can recapture. But against that recapture, I could push this pawn. Um, yeah, so I think this is the moment where we finally take that. And stop screwing around with who's going to take here first, or... I'm sorry, who's, why are they going to shuffle something and then I take this, or am I going to take this before, and they get to move this from c8 to e6 in one move? So, yeah, I finally answered that question. They moved the bishop, and now I take. So they lose a move, having to move the bishop twice, or they take with this pawn, which is extremely dangerous. And, I wouldn't recommend it, but what do I know? I haven't looked deeply at this. I've just done this like surface level analysis and it looks pretty good. Um, so I guess next, I mean, I, that did, taking here does interrupt my plans of pushing all the pawns. I could have continued pushing all the pawns and just ignored this bishop move. <sighs> But um, maybe that would have been the right thing to do. It's just not a very me thing to ignore um, free pawns. I don't tend to ignore them. Um, but yeah, there's probably... A, I mean, I see three possibilities here, right? One is that the bishop moves away somewhere. Uh, two is that the bishop takes it, and three is that the pawn takes it. So those are like the three categories of things one could do. Uh, unless they're doing something completely other than moving the bishop or the pawn. Um, maybe they have some amazing attack against my king that I just hadn't considered yet. Could be. Um... So, oh wait, yeah, I saw, I see a variation now that I missed earlier, um, also looks promising. Well, no, it's not as good as it looks. It's easy to make things that look promising that just aren't. Um, okay, pawn takes happens. I think the fiercest resistance is put at... Uh, offered by retreating here and making some future threat to hit my queen. As it stands right now, I thought I have lots of awesome moves against this king, most notably pawn f5. Um, but does that win? Pawn f5, if they take, I take back. Threatening pawn f6. That's super tempting to want to play that. But if I'm being objective here, uh, I don't know that it's the best move. Um, hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, hang on. I see another idea. It takes a little bit more time to execute, but it seems... Well... 
Is there some way out of it? Hmm. Oh. Well, that's fancy. Okay, I'm going to play the fancy move. I've kind of given up on being objective at this point. So, this creates a pin. If the bishop retreats, I take the queen and they can't take mine because the bishop would be pinned. Um, so there's some significant threats in this position. Um, so that basically screams for a particular response here. But I don't think that response works. Um, it's super close to being completely refuted. Yeah, so we'll see what they do. If they play the move I'm predicting, or if they play something else. Well, I guess there's two decent moves here. I think I see two decent moves. Yeah, that's the move I was expecting. Uh, the other one's king g8. And then I'm just playing this. This is the move that says... I'm playing something that looks impressive that may or may not work. This is dangerous. Don't do this in a tournament situation unless there's like nothing at stake. Um, but no, I think this removes one of their key defensive pieces at a time where all of their other defensive pieces are really struggling here. And yeah, it does offer a queen trade, but I just collected a bishop, so if the queen trade happens, then I'm up a rook and two pawns, as shown here. So, yeah, I mean, I know what I would do in black shoes, but I don't know if it's completely lost. Um... Didn't mean to make the shoe joke on purpose. Sorry about that. Anyway. So, I'm searching for mate if they take the rook. I was a bit extremely confident there for no reason. But, I mean, I don't know. By now, there should be some reasons for me to be confident here, right? Yes, I don't know that I have mate here. I did this rook for bishop exchange. Now I'm only up two pawns with an extremely strong attack, but uh, only up two pawns. I have a choice between knight g6, knight g5, knight f6 f5, g5, rook d1. All these things are possible. Uh, this is why I didn't look so deeply. Because there's just too much to look at. And none of it seemed obviously winning. But it really looks like at least one of these moves should be extremely good. It's just a matter of figuring out which one. It's probably one of the pawn moves. Um, pawn moves tend to carry a lot of weight. Pawn g5, queen e8, knight g6, king here, pawn takes pawn, wins. But is pawn f5 more winning than pawn g5 is? Pawn f5, bishop takes pawn, knight g6 wins a bishop. That's what I've been struggling on for the past eternity here. At pawn f5, queen e8, queen exchange plus pawn f6 doesn't win. 
Um, pawn g5, queen e8 again. We're going back into variation I looked at earlier, which is not how you should read or calculate. But that's how I'm doing things today. Yeah, pawn g5 just wins. We're playing pawn g5. Well, queen d4... Queen d4 can't possibly work. It'd be awesome if it did, but... Am I willing to bet the game that queen d4 fails? Am I willing to bet that? I mean... What sort of justice is there in this game if that move doesn't work? Yeah, g5 has to win here. g5's got to be a winning move. So that's the bet. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, we're just playing a game, a friendly, untimed game. And since it's untimed, I'm... Well, I said I was taking this extremely seriously. Um, but it turns out in the last move here, I sacrificed my rook for a bishop. And so now I'm only up two pawns with a winning attack. Um, so it's possible maybe I'm not taking this as seriously as some turns ago. Um, ah, teach one game, please. Uh, let's see. I am already like 25 minutes late to somebody else's live stream. I might be able to play after this live stream with you. Um, I guess, you know, my Leech's username here is the same as my Twitch username. Oh, okay, that's fine. Sorry, I didn't mean to pressure my opponent. Yeah, good game, well played. My apologies. So, no, that was a very exciting game. Um... So, yeah, at the end here, I'm threatening pawn takes, I'm threatening this, I'm threatening this, and knight that hits this square. Uh, if they take the pawn, I take back with my pawn. It's extremely sharp. Yeah. So, this is good fun. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry, I'm heading out to go watch another person do their live stream. And all of us are welcome to join us here. Let's see. <laughs> uh, uh, one tournament games with money prizes where opponents also taunted. It sometimes, but not often, works. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they just left himself wide open to attack. I took these nice open lines, aimed, and fired. And, yeah, it was super strong. So, thanks uh, to Suki Ninja for this exciting game. Uh, if you hover over the game in the upper left corner, you can bookmark the game. That'll help you find it uh, from your profile page later. Although you can easily search for games in many other ways. Like if I go to his profile page, I can see um, his game history as well as our mutual games. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's good to have things you enjoy. Uh, he put up quite a fight for a player who claims he hasn't played since uh, eighth grade. Um, he must have been quite good back then. Either that or like his whole club was monstrous or something. I don't know because like this I had to fight for this. All right. Cool. All right. So yeah, we're heading on over. That was good fun.